Hi, this is Pastor Gary Williams again speaking to you from the parish house at the Community Church of Saddlebrook. And uh, we're uh, discussing the subject of surviving the holidays uh, when you are grieving the loss of a loved one. And so we've got some tips for you today. Uh, when you lose somebody that's so close and uh, important to you, it's a very difficult time. And, and holidays can be particularly difficult. And so I want you to uh, see if you can pick up some ideas here that might just make it a little bit better for you. Holidays often trigger unintentional uh, uh, un unanticipated, I should say, unanticipated emotions. You don't expect them to come, and they just kind of pop up out of nowhere. And uh, these emotions can sometimes embarrass you. Uh, they might uh, make you feel negatively in the sense that maybe you're uh, impacting an event you might be at, for instance. And uh, you don't uh, want to do that, and so you're, you're feeling a little uh, self-conscious. You might find yourself making decisions that uh, you didn't want to make or decisions that you later regret uh, during these emotional little times. We could very well imagine that they are um, more imposing than they truly are. Uh, it's not quite as bad as what we think it is, but we think it's bad, and so our emotions are even uh, more stressed. You can avoid some of those stresses by planning ahead for your next event. Uh, this includes making positive choices ahead of time and taking advantage of healing relationships with certain people. I'd like to share a few tips, so let's jump into that. They come from our annual workshop that we do titled Surviving the Holidays. Tip number one, uh, create new traditions. I'm sure that uh, most of you have traditions that you've used during the holidays, uh, some, something that you loved doing with your loved one or with your family, and uh, it was a very important uh, time for you, a, a good tradition. For instance, at our home, every Christmas Eve, when the kids were small, we would uh, bake homemade donuts and take them instantly over to neighbors while they were hot and sweet and give them away, and the neighbors absolutely loved it, looked forward to that every year. That was a great tradition for us. We also did Christmas Angels, where it would be like Secret Pals, where we would uh, draw names in the family, and then we had to secretly do things for each other. Uh, and then at the end on Christmas Eve, try to figure out, well, who is my uh, secret angel? Those are fun traditions. But you know, you may want to consider uh, dropping some of those traditions. Uh, you don't have to continue them just because you did them. Uh, it's okay to let something go. Uh, it's a, an opportunity actually to maybe create some new traditions. Maybe you could create something brand new that you would like to try. You've never done it before, but you heard about it. It's a new adventure for you and maybe you and your family. It's a step toward reinventing your life. Reinvention is so important because you have to deal with brand new issues you've never had to deal with before. Let me give you a second tip. Allow good relationships to help your healing. Determine who would be the good people to share the holidays with. Uh, that's very important. Uh, some people might have more of a negative impact upon you you might not for a year or two want to uh, connect with them so closely, but others have a very positive impact. So that might be an individual, it might be a family group, it might be a, an outside group that's not even part of your relatives, but uh, figure out where that could be. Let me give you a third tip. Assert yourself during the holiday time. If you receive an invitation, for instance, graciously tell them ahead of time what you are capable of doing. Let them know right off the bat that you might, for instance, have to leave early if things get a little difficult for you, uh, and not to take it personally. Uh, assure them that you will be positive and you will love coming to this activity, but they just have to understand that something could trigger an emotion along the way, and it might change things a little bit for you. Don't hesitate to decline an invitation, uh, especially if you have lots of invitations. You want to try to keep the holidays, uh, the first year or two after the loss of a loved one, a, a little more simple. Don't in, engage in too many things. Don't use that as a vice to kind of hide from things that you could very positively be dealing with. So let me give you a fourth tip as well. Write a grief letter. Grief letters are very important. They're very helpful. Express your feelings and your moods in this letter. Indicate what you miss about your lost relationship, things that you thought were really uh, memorable to you regarding this individual you have lost. Uh, state your need for hope. 
What is it that you hope for? What is it that you need right now? Identify and thank God in this letter for the encouragements he has brought to you. That means you have to think about these encouragements. So often it's easy to overlook them and not recognize what God is doing for you. Now, you could address this letter to God and then seal it up and put it away somewhere and maybe pull it out in a year or two. I've known some people who have pulled these letters out maybe five or ten years later. And you see the growth and the change and it can serve a very uh, strong purpose for you. You might also uh, give that letter to a friend or someone you can trust and um, ask them to hang on to it. You may even ask them to open it up and to read that letter so that you can talk about it out loud together. That's a great time of healing and help. Now, uh, the uh, fifth tip here is to uh, cry in front of others. Uh, you say, well, wait a minute, I don't want to cry in front of others. Well, that's not always healthy. It could be very healthy for you to spontaneously be able to uh, cry a healthy cry and um, have uh, someone come up and put their arm around you and squeeze you a little bit. Uh, you, you don't have to say anything. They might not even say anything. Maybe it's just a hug that says, I love you. We understand. That's okay. Don't hesitate to, do, hesitate to do that. You know, sometimes men feel like they can't cry, and that's not true. You need to be able to, to do that. It's part of the healing process. Those endorphins get moving, and it actually helps to heal your thoughts and your body and your emotions. Well, uh, warn people ahead of time that if you feel an uncontrollable spell uh, coming on, you might have to remove yourself. You may have to go to a quiet place in the house or in the building somewhere. You might have to be alone just for a little bit. Uh, and just let them know that's okay. Not to worry about me. I'll be just fine and I will be back. Uh, but I will just need to do that. You know, uh, even Jesus cried. And when he uh, ex 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 came to the place to where he realized that a good friend of his, Lazarus, was... Uh, dead, had passed and gone, seemingly, uh, and he saw the emotions going on around him. And of course, he knew he could heal uh, this friend, uh, but he wept. In fact, here's what the scripture says. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then Jesus said, uh, or the Jews said, rather, see how they loved him. So this is a healthy thing, not to hesitate to do that. So friends, uh, make your holidays easier by making positive choices ahead of time and making positive, connecting, healing relationships with the right people. And remember this last encouraging scripture for you to take with you. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Now, if God has plans for us, I think it might be a good idea for us to make plans as well. Thank you.